Hey everyone, happy Wine Wednesday. Uh, I can't believe another week has gone by. Uh, for those of you who have never tuned into Wine Wednesday before, it is when you join me for a glass of wine or to whine about your dog. So whichever option kind of works for you. <laughs> uh, and we normally look at questions we received over the week and answer one or two of them, depending on how much time we have. So it is a Facebook Live, and then we upload it to our YouTube page. So yeah, I hope everyone has had a great week. I'm really hoping the spring weather shows up so that it's a little bit better for uh, outdoor walking and whatnot. Um, I didn't really notice it, but I saw people posting about hail or snow or something yesterday. So that's exactly what I don't want to see. <laughs> so I'm really hoping that that spring weather is here so that, uh, you know, it's a little bit more comfortable for our dogs when we go out. Um, our week this week. So on Saturday, we did a trial run with our life skills and beyond class. So what that was, was we went um, on a virtual format with them and did an online training session. So it was a trial run so that we could hopefully move all of our groups for those who are interested over onto that format since we don't know when this, uh, you know, kind of pandemic stuff will end. So it went really well with our life skills class. It is something we've done. We've been doing virtual training uh, with some private clients for a long time. We don't really talk about that, but we often sometimes have a uh, <laughs> clients who are, you know, live a couple of hours away and things like that. So that's something we've always offered for people who live away, but we've just recently moved, uh, of course, in the present situation to doing it with our group clients for those who are interested. I know, Rain, I cannot even believe that it is Wednesday. I just said that I feel like the week went by so quick that I was just doing this <laughs> the other day. Uh, I also hope you're having a glass of wine. You most definitely deserve it with the work that you're doing. So I hope you are um, curled up with Charlie and having a glass of wine because you deserve it more than I do. <laughs> so yeah, we're really excited about doing this online format with our clients. Um, so what we've presently done is our pre-existing group clients, we've given them the option to go online with us. And it will not take away from them having the option to meet with us in person once this is all over. It was just something additional that we wanted to offer to them so that they could get answers to their questions or training issues and stuff right now. So it's actually kind of uh, just a complimentary thing with what we are hoping to do will be the in-person stuff um, <laughs> very, very soon. Hopefully, hopefully we're, we're missing being out there with everyone. So what we're really excited about is this Saturday, we've um, scheduled time slots to go online with all of our groups. So we're hoping that some of them take advantage of that and ask questions. The thing that a lot of people don't realize is that regardless how complicated your situation is with your dog, such a big chunk of the success and what happens comes with the work that the owners put in. So I'm really hoping people will kind of take advantage of the questions because they don't need to wait months to get help with their issues. We can 100% answer them, troubleshoot them, give them some great skills so that they can uh, get started with having the best dog possible. And I agree, Rain, I, <laughs> I was trying to calculate literally, and I, I think I gave up and I didn't even do it. I was thinking right before I came on here, so Rain asked what month it is. Um, <laughs> I, I I am aware it's April, but what I was trying to calculate out is how long has it been that I've been like self, like self distancing, like, and I mean, we're going kind of extreme, like we're not going anywhere or anything like that. So I, I gave up on the math. I don't even know. Is it three weeks? Has it been a month? I'm like, I think it's definitely been at least three weeks, but yeah, I feel the time is just <laughs> um, drifting away on us, but yeah. Uh, so, um, that's kind of what we've been up to guys. So we're getting ready to move things online. We've taken on a few new private clients for online training. So it's nice. I do of course miss getting to, you know, handle the dogs myself and see people in person and all that fabulous stuff. But this is, um, a great alternative kind of using technology and being able to connect with people. So that's an amazing advantage that we have in today's time is that 
we still get to connect with people regardless that we're, you know, kind of self-distancing or whatever. So, um, for those of you who have never tuned in before, Wine Wednesday is when you join me for a glass of wine or to wine about your dog. I don't even think I took a sip yet. I've just been jabbering away. So, I do have with me today, well, I've got a couple of things to show you. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'll post a picture. This is my, um, what I call my Wine Wednesday sweater. So, it says, I'd rather be with my dog, and it has a wine bottle and a glass of wine. Um, so, <laughs> we're... Uh, it's my Wine Wednesday sweater, so I thought it was fitting to wear today. Um, I do get a lot of questions on this sweater when people see it in pictures on my social media. So there is a company called I'd Rather Be With My Dog, and they make all kinds of clothing. Um, so they make stuff for your dog that says I'd Rather Be With My Human, and then they have sweaters, t-shirts, bandanas, backpacks, hats, everything. Uh, but this one specifically, I do have a couple of t-shirts and stuff. But this one with the wine bottle and the wine glass really spoke to me. So um, I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> and before I get into talking about what I'm going to talk about today, I do have Sophia with me. Look at her. She is just, I have her with me actually as my little <laughs> demonstration. So I will get into that in a second. Um, but yeah, so this is Sophia, our French bulldog. I was going to say our little French bulldog. But she's not so, she's not so little anymore. Not so much. Um, so today, I'll put her down because she is actually legit heavy. Today we are going to talk about puppies. So thanks, we think she's pretty precious too. We're kind of obsessed with her. Uh, I was actually going to bring Coco up here, but Coco was sound asleep. I went downstairs to get her and I was just like, hey Coco, nothing, sound asleep. So, uh, Sophia was kind of like, what are you up to? So I was like, you can join Wine Wednesday today, I guess. Let's go. So what we're going to talk about is puppies, but I want you to keep in mind that what I'm going to talk about does apply regardless the age of your dog. Lots of people, you know, rescue older dogs or for various reasons, maybe didn't work on a particular thing with their dog. So even though I'm kind of referencing puppies, it legit can be used regardless of, um, the age of your dog, okay? So one of the important things that people should really work on with their puppies or their dogs is touching them all over kind of thing. So, so many dogs have issues, you know, with maybe their hind leg being touched or their nails being clipped or being groomed, things like that. And it's most of the time, it's because we haven't taken that effort to kind of desensitize them to those things. So. When I, I'm going to have a sip here. So when I show Sophia like this, so everyone sees how relaxed she is. <laughs> um, she's really heavy, so it's hard for me to hold her up on camera. Um, so when I show Sophia to you guys like this, it, this is something that she's been desensitized to. The idea that I can flip her around, move her around. Right before I picked her up, she was just curled up here next to me, not on my lap or anything, just right next to me. Um, curled up, basically kind of asleep. But she's been desensitized into me handling her in any way, shape, or form. So it doesn't stress her out. It doesn't make her anxious. She trusts me. She knows I'm not going to harm her. We can touch her paw pads, her nails, all that kind of good stuff that you want to touch. Now, obviously, if you've got a larger dog, you're not going to really pick them up like this, but you can have them between your legs uh, with their head kind of there and be practicing rolling them over, moving them around. But even before we get to the, like she's literally gone back to sleep, guys. Um, even before we get to the rolling them over and whatnot stage of things, we start really slow. And you can use a lot of reward with your dog, but you want to be able to touch them anywhere. Touch their eyes, hi. Touch their nose, yes. Look in their ears, hi. <laughs> All that kind of good stuff because you want them to have really positive experiences, to not be stressed out. You don't want, um, you know, something bad to be happening when your vet is trying to examine them, when you're taking them to the groomer, things like that. So this is one of those things that a lot of people don't really think about until they notice a problem arises. So they notice the nails get too long, they take the dog to the groomer, 
and then the groomer tells you, you know, how bad your dog was or that they had to muzzle your dog, things like that. So how I recommend that you start out is have your dog next to you. I am going to have to pick Sophia up a little bit because she's low. She's not a tall dog. So you have your dog, you know, you're going to sit, anything along those lines. Hi. And you're just going to start touching them. First, start with a place that you know they're okay. So maybe they like their head scratched. Hi. Yes, good girl. You know, and you're going to acknowledge that they're being good, acknowledge that um, this is desirable behavior. And then you're going to expand on that. So it might be touching their shoulder blades. Hi. Moving down their legs. Um, paw pads and nails are so, so, so important. Uh, so something I often do is when my dogs are up hanging out with me, I'm often kind of just touching their paws. So I'm touching their nails, each nail individually. So do you see how relaxed she is? Um, so each nail, can you guys hear her snoring actually? Can you, I don't know if you guys, yeah, can you hear it? Um, so, um, that's how relaxed she is. She's literally snoring right now. So we just practice touching each individual nail, touching the paw pad, and really touch them all over, practicing opening their mouth up, looking at their teeth, all that kind of good stuff, because that's the kind of thing your vet's going to do. Your vet is going to, you know, physically examine them. They're going to look into your dog's ears. Um, you know, they're going to be moving that around, <laughs> getting right up in there. <laughs> the biggest issue I'm having right now is holding her up for you. Um, so really, really practice those things. And I always say, of course, practice it when it's a puppy. So you bring the puppy home right from the get go, really kind of get into that habit. But it doesn't matter if you have a five year old dog that has sensitivity to certain areas being touched or a 10 year old dog or whatever, you can work up to that. So all that you need to do is start really, really slow. Don't think that you're going to just hop in there and do exactly what I'm doing right now in this instance. Instead, you're going to know what your dog is comfortable with and you're going to try and expand on that and really reward them for being calm when you do something that they previously were uncomfortable with. So the reward can be uh, food-based, um, verbal, physical, toy, playtime, things like that, whatever kind of piques your dog's interest. That's what the reward can be. But really um, work towards that. I think it's such an important thing and it is totally doable. We have so many people that come to us and they can't clip their dog's nails or, you know, their dog is sensitive about their hind legs being touched, things like that. These are all fixable things. Hey Mel, I hope you're great. And uh, I hope you're having a glass of wine. Uh, I hope also homeschooling is going well for all you people who had to start that today. Um, I've been enjoying the, uh, Facebook posts from people and their homeschooling efforts. So I'm enjoying that a little bit. I feel for you. I don't, I don't think I could do it. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. So hopefully that kind of makes sense for you guys. And that's how you can have a really calm, relaxed dog. One that is not going to, um, you know, be overwhelmed the vet and the groomer. Um, a long-standing client of mine, I don't think they'll mind me telling this story kind of thing, and I, I won't say who it is anyway, but their dog had been going to the vet um, all the time kind of thing to get their nails clipped. I've got several clients that do that, um, and all of a sudden the um, dog had growled and snapped at the vet when uh, the vet like hadn't even started clipping anything kind of thing. So it's really important that we're kind of staying up on it, that we're teaching the dogs where these boundaries are, um, because we want to have happy, well-balanced dogs, don't we? Right? Uh, we want to be able to enjoy them. You don't want it to be a horrible job for your groomer, your vet, or anyone like that. So really, really work on it. And you can have a nice, relaxed dog. Like this dog right now, I am basically cradling like a baby. <laughs> Hi. Yes. Um, but it's because of all the desensitization, the work that we went into it. Um, I'm going to let it curl up here next to me and go to sleep. So I dare you guys to work on that. Really kind of get in that habit of touching them all over, start slow 
and use lots of reward. Make it really positive, guys, and don't go too quick. So one of the things that I'll say to people who have issues clipping their dog's nails is I'll tell them, don't focus on taking those clippers out and clipping every single paw, every single nail. Work your dog up to it. Having your dog calm with the nails or the clippers around, that's a win. Having your dog um, calm and you clipped one nail, that's a win. Come back to the other nail the next day. You don't have to stress yourself out and your dog out by trying to accomplish too much at once. And if you can keep it nice and light and positive and really reward-based, then what's going to happen is your dog is going to become more desensitized to it and realize that these kind of things are really positive for them and they're going to look forward to it. You might even see your dog happy to see the clippers come out because, hey, my owner's going to give me all kinds of extra love or a treat or whatever it is just because these things are out here. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, that is one of the main things I wanted to kind of talk about today was puppyhood. And what prompted me with it was we had had so many um, messages from people. It seems like a lot of people have been getting dogs or puppies right now, which I think is great. I know some rescues in different areas. I don't know about our specific like rescue groups here, but I know some of them have literally been cleared out because people have adopted so many of the dogs, which I just think is amazing. Um, but like I said, don't forget that regardless how old your dog is, it's something that you can still work on with them. Just go slow, be patient, and you'll have all the success, okay? If you're watching this video later, please give us a like or a comment, or even if you're watching now, we love connecting with you all, and uh, hopefully you guys will tune in next week or support our YouTube page, because uh, we're so excited to put out content and connect with you all. So I hope everyone has a great week. I hope you are safe and happy and well, and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Okay, have a great night, everyone. Bye.